Hi, how are you? Matt Watson here from CarWow. So I'm sitting in a Fiat Panda Cross 4x4 and next to me is a Tesla Model X. Both of these are technically SUVs and we're going to have an uphill drag race off-road as well as compete in five other off-road challenges as well to see which of these two cars is actually the best off-road. So let me tell you about this little Fiat Panda. It has a 900cc two-cylinder turbocharged petrol engine with 85 horsepower and 145 newton meters of torque. I've got a six-speed manual gearbox, all-wheel drive, and this thing is light. It weighs under 1,200 kilos. It's also cheap, I'm talking about 18,000 pounds brand new. That Tesla, it's got two electric motors and combined they produce 417 horsepower and 660 newton meters of torque. So, Loads more performance than this little thing, but then 95 kilowatt hour battery adds weight. That thing weighs over 2,500 kilos. It's also expensive. Brand new, that was like 95,000 pounds, though that one is three years old. In fact, it's owned by CarWow CEO, James Hind. He bought it two days ago. I called him, I said, oh, you got a Tesla Model X, we'd like to do some off-roading with it. Can you lend it us? He's only had it two days paid 68,000 pounds for it. And there is a chance that I might destroy it today. And if I do, this will be the last car wow video I ever do. Anyway, make sure you subscribe to this channel just in case I don't get fired, because <laughs> there's gonna be loads more cool videos coming soon. Also, why don't you follow us on Instagram? Finally, if you're thinking about buying a new car, be it a Tesla or a Fiat, check out CarWow. You can compare offers on cars, you can compare delivery times, dealers, reviews. Put a link up there, just click on that, you can go check it out. Alternatively, at a later date, you can simply Google help me car wow my team and i'll help you choose the right car for you and get it for a fair price from one of our trusted dealers anyway that's enough of that let's get on with the race all right here we go i'm going to put the car into off-road mode that tesla has his air suspension jacked up to the highest point so it doesn't bottom out i'm just going to launch in first gear keep him first fortunately we've got hill hold so when i lift off the brake it'll hold it for a second give me enough time to get on the accelerator then i'm just going to hoon it see what happens we've got darren starting the race there he'll also be judging the cars in the five other challenges we put them through and whichever one wins a challenge gets two points and then the second place car well, the, the loser car gets one point and at the end we'll tot up all the points to see which car was the best overall off-road. For now though, let's find out which is the quickest up this slope. Three, two, one. Oh, slip back, come on. Oh, this is close. <laughs> I'm gonna do him. Oh, I was watching that, wondering if it was gonna bottom out. It looked like it managed to just stay off the ground. <laughs> I backed off a bit at the top. I'm not sure who won that. Let me just check. Go on then, Darren, who won? The Panda came first and the Tesla was behind in second place. Uh, okay, so that's two points to the Panda and one to the Model X. Let's do the next challenge. This next challenge is all about maneuverability. So we're gonna drive along here over the rut and then go around the hairpin, which is quite tight, and then back on ourselves. And Darren's gonna time us, and the car that does it in the quickest time wins. It's that simple. Now, in case you're wondering why the Tesla wasn't so good on the last event, it's because once it starts to take slip, it seems to really cut the power to the wheels. And so it got a slow start. Hopefully that won't be a problem this time because I've now jumped into the Tesla because I want to make things harder for myself. You see, this is all about the turning circle and how easy you can get around that turn at the top. And this car's turning circle is 12.4 meters, <laughs> whereas the Panda's nine meters. So he's got an advantage, but I've got Tesla power, so I should shoot off well. I must say, I quite like the interior spec on this. It's nice, isn't it? I think James chose wisely. If I don't damage his car, let's do this. Darren's gonna count in the Panda. Let's see what it does. Three, two, one. Oh, poor start. Stuttered away from the stop, but now he can just fly below. That thing is so light. Not even 1,200 kilos, it's just firing around there and manoeuvrable at the top. That's really funny to watch. He's smashing that. That's a tricky bit. You don't want to get too carried away, otherwise you get fired into the tree. Oh, through the water splash. Did a good job there. That is really quick. That's as quick as I've ever seen anything go around there. Let's see what time he got. What did he do? 19.31. Oh my yeah. gosh. Okay, that's going to be hard to beat, but I'm going to give it a go. Right. <laughs> Come on, don't break this. I've got my seat jacked up so I can see all the ruts and stuff. Oh, this is where I could damage the car. Three, two, one. Oh, I 
I can just feel the weight of this thing. You know, two and a half tons. I'm just gonna have to be careful here. Otherwise, uh, it'll bottom out. Oh, the sensors are going crazy. Oh, how am I gonna make it round here? Come on. Can I, can I do it in one? I'm gonna do it in one. I'm gonna do this in one. That is insane. Ah. Oh, I'm not gonna bottom out, am I? I've gotta watch this. This is my job on the line. I've lost this already. <laughs> There's a big sign on the dash just going, stop, stop. I just don't have the confidence to thrash this through here. Oh, oh, oh I can just feel it just bottom out right on its suspension, even though it's raised up to the highest level. Right, that's embarrassing. I lost that, but let's see by how much. Go on, how did I do? 50.28. At least it was under a minute. So that's two points to the Panda and one point to this. So far then, Panda's got four points, the Tesla has two. This next challenge is all about getting you down a steep, slippery slope as safely as possible. So we're gonna have a reverse race in the way that the car that is slowest wins. So what we're gonna do is engage the car's hill descent control systems. On this Panda, it's called gravity control. Put the car into neutral to go as slow as possible so you don't store the engine and then you just set the speed of the brake and then you release the brake and it should just brake itself as it goes down the hill. Same with the Tesla, except for you don't put it in neutral, you just drive down the slope and you set the speed of your brake. The car should sense it's going down a hill and it should then apply the brakes all the way down. So we'll be taking our feet off the pedals for this to see which car gets you down the slowest. Let's do it. Three, two, one. Feet off pedals. It's working. Tesla just shot off. He was kind of level with me, then he just buggered off. This, look, in neutral, feet off the pedals. Can you see? Look, 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 there you go. And there, safely down. I don't know what happened with that Tesla. Anyway, that's two points for the Panda and one for the Model X, which means this Panda has six points in total. And the Tesla, three. This next challenge tests these cars' ground clearance, their suspension travel, and their chassis articulation, because we're gonna go down that hill there, which has various steps, so the cars will walk over those steps, and then we're gonna come up a more extreme slope with even bigger steps, and so we get on. Right, let's do this. Go on, Tesla. It's time to pull some points back. So I'm gonna follow the Panda. Ha, it's got its wheel in the air already. It's like it's stepping down some steps. How's this gonna do? Bearing in mind that that weighs half what this does. Is this going to be able to get a wheel in the air? Oh, that feels weird. I'm having to control it on the brake. Rain's making it a bit slippery. Oh, I'm riding on 22 inch alloy wheels. Hopefully I'm not going to scratch them on any rocks. I've got slip start on this car. So I'll let it slip a bit to get me out of a tricky situation. I'm now balancing, send me in the air. Oh, I don't want to drop off the top of this and crunch the front bumper. Ground clearance on this is actually better than the Panda, but that's obviously a shorter car. So it can cope with like sudden steps better. Got down that all right. It's quite pleased with that. Now we need to go up the hill. And this is a bit more extreme. Let's see how the Panda does up here. This will test the traction control system as well because it's all a bit slippery. And the cars are on their road tires. Go on Panda, it's struggling. Because it hasn't got much power. This has got all the power. Look at that with his wheel in the air. Oh, is it gonna get stuck? Oh no. If it gets cross axle, so it has like diagonal wheels up in the air, it will be stuck. Unless its ESB system sorts itself out by breaking the wheels, which I think it did. That did well. God, it's all on me now. Ah, uh, sorry James about your car. Please don't fire me. <laughs> Got Darren directing me. Lots of beeping and bonging going on. Okay, let's just have a word with Darren. What's going on, Darren? You're about to bottom out on the passenger side. Really? Have the ground clearance. But I've got more ground clearance than that. Sure That's got right? the articulation, the movement where your independent suspension is pushing wheels down, but not necessarily lifting your car up. Okay, right, let me just check something. Pretty sure I was in the high driving position. No, it's in low. It keeps resetting itself. Should we call that operator error? We'll call that operator error. So this has got air suspension and you can raise it up and you can see, look, very low, six inches, low 6.7 inches, standard 7.5, high is 8.3 inches, and then very high. 220 millimetres. I've just gone all metric now for the last one because it doesn't say it on here. Have we raised up? If you go forward, you're going to touch the bottom of the car. I want you to double check. It's still going up. 
back's not. So the front goes up, but the back's not because all the weight's towards the back. Yep. We've got heavy battery, so it's just sinking down. I don't want to be defeated that easily. Here we go. Oh. Oh, and now we're going backwards. <laughs> it's like a stuck pig. And now I'm cross axled. It's game over. <laughs> oh, God. The main difference is the tyres. Slightly more aggressive tyres than the ones on this one. So would it make it over there now? If you had a bit more grip on the tyres, yes. Oh, can I try again a bit more? Try. And I'm not going to bottom out? You've got about that much gap on that side. OK, let's try. try. Come on! Sorry, James. You don't want your car to be defeated, though, do you? <laughs> oh, that's a no, that's a no from Darren. <laughs> Today the tyres have let you down. This has got like high performance road tyres on it. So if we'd had some better tyres, might have got away with that. Might have made up there, yeah? Yeah. It was really struggling though. I've got the ground clearance. You've got the ground clearance. It's just the tyres <sighs> won't hold it. Well, there we go. So yeah, again. One point to the Tesla, two to the Panda, which means the Panda is on eight points and this is on four. I've got to get back down now. No, uh, I'm getting wet as well. Not as wet as Darren. For this next test, we're going to drive down that slope there, which is banked. And what's going to happen is the car's going to get the wheels up in the air and that will show how much twist there is in their chassis. And to really check out the twist, we're going to open and close the door, make sure we can without any problems at all. If you do that in an old Land Rover Defender, because they twist so much, you can't actually open the door. But because these are monocoque chassis, so the body actually adds to the strength of the car, they should be fine. What we're also going to be looking for is how much the suspension compresses, so how much they sit down into their wheel arches, because you don't want it compressing too much, because that means the car can get a little bit stuck. So we're going to drive down here, and then Darren will mark them at the end, see which car does best. Let's do it. I wonder if that car's going to twist, because it's so heavy. Look at it already, it's squatting down on its suspension. Normally with air suspension, you're better off because you can really jack it up and stop it pushing the wheel into the wheel arch, but that one seems to be quite low down at the rear. Yeah, there we go, door open fine. You're probably thinking, Matt, you should be doing the Falcon doors. Well, I didn't want to risk in the Falcon doors because if there is any twist and we open the Falcon doors, they could get stuck and damaged and that costs cost thousands to fix and then I'd lose my job. You don't want that. All right, there we go. Good thing about cheap cars like this, you just can chill out. Right, there we go. I think we're up in the air now. Whoa! Can I open the door? No problem at all. Look at that. <laughs> all fine. Yeah, this is doing well. This is easy in this. Oi! Whee! Just watch out for this big divot at the end so don't bottom out. Yeah, go around that. Whee! This panda is so good. Right, and let's get the verdict from Darren, which car he thought won that challenge. So, Darren! Come in running. <laughs> so, what do you reckon? Which car won? For control, the Tesla. Had more wheels on the ground, it was a slower and easier drive. The Panda, one to do with the manual side, it was a little bit bouncier and it did have a bit more wheels off the ground so it didn't have the articulation travel that the Tesla had. Oh, wow. So, okay, Tesla wins one finally. So, two points to the Tesla in this challenge and one point to the Panda. So, overall, that means that the Tesla now has six points and the Panda has nine points. This is the final challenge. And what we're gonna do now is check out the car's approach angles, their departure angles, and their brake over angles by driving over three obstacles, and we'll see how well they compare. This car's already lost based on the current scores. It cannot win, but maybe it can save some face and close the gap on the Panda. Come on, Tesla, you can do it. Here we go. Oh, feel this thing thump about, you can. <laughs> Just the sheer weight of it. Where's that Panda? It's like a little mountain goat. So the Panda has an approach angle of 24 degrees. Quite a short overhang, so it gets to that slope quite easy. This one, I don't know, Tesla don't state it. Oh, we're spinning our wheels a bit. Oh, brake over angle now. I ground out. This sounds bad, sorry James. Sorry James. I'm gonna stop here and see what Darren thinks I should do. Darren, I've clearly got a very bad brake over angle. Can you come and just see how broken over I am? I'm stuck. Momentarily detained. <laughs> Momentarily detained. Or maybe permanently unemployed. I need to get over here without damaging the car. You won't make it. Do I need to go back? Yes. We're reversing. Ah, sorry, James. Sorry, James. Sorry, James. Soft mud. It's soft mud, James. 
Whoa, it's slippy. Now we're going to check the departure angle at the front, <laughs> which I didn't intend doing. You can see the bit that caught me up there. Just a little bit of the ground just poking up. Not too bad. No serious damage done. These brakes make a noise though, don't they? Listen to this. It's a car groaning. Oh, you hurt me. It's like a dying animal. <laughs> what was that noise? So we're not going to the second obstacle because this is going to just ground out again. We're going to the final obstacle instead. In the meantime, let's have the little panda go across the second obstacle. So I'm going to have to sit this obstacle out and watch the panda do its thing. It's going to test out the departure angle. It's very good on the panda. It's 34 degrees. It's got a little short back end. So it shouldn't ground out its bottom when it goes off the edge of this slope and when it comes back down the bottom. Look at that. It just did that so easy. Right. Now I can join it for the final obstacle, breakover angle, which I've already proved isn't great. I'm following the panda again now. So its breakover angle is 21 degrees, which is all right. Let's see how he does over here. So get some wheels in the air. Oh, back wheel is spinning. Oh, oh, back wheel off the ground. Here we go. Come on, Tesla. Don't bottom out. I'm relying on Darren here. Oh, I can feel the stability control just nibbling away. Looks like the Tesla did all right on this bit. It's just that one hill there at the beginning, let it down. Let's see what Darren thought. Ah, oh, Darren, what do you think? Far superior. What, over that bit? Yes. Okay. The Fiat Panda struggled like mad with traction because it was a short wheelbase. The speed and the control of the Tesla came up there, lifting the wheels up in the air. You're a nice height on the ground, and as you level out, it just pulled forward straight away, so smooth. But it didn't do to the obstacles. Because it's a longer wheelbase than the, the Panda. Okay, and that's why it bottomed out. Yep, because the departure angle is greater on the Fiat because it's a shorter axle. Okay, so overall then, on this section, it's Panda, right? You don't want to give it to the Panda, do you? No, because it touched on there. Oh, really? It achieved one. Okay. One on this hill. Yeah. It touched on that hill yeah. and it lost on this hill. So which one do you think performed best overall? In the conditions today, I'd have took the little Fiat. Okay, so there you go. So another two points to the Fiat, one point to the Tesla. So the final scores then are 11 points and the win for the Fiat Panda and the Tesla scored seven points and comes last. Now I've actually found an amazing deal on an SUV through CarWow. And if you want to see what that car is, it's one of my favorite SUVs and the deal, click on the pop-out banner up there to go check it out on CarWow. Thanks for watching. Hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like. Let me know some other off-road challenges you'd like us to do in the comments below. If you click on those windows there, you can watch some more off-roading videos. And if you click on that box there, I'm not going to tell you what's there, but it's something cool. Click on it. You'll see. See you next time.